with Go Sign, we are offering a lot more functionality, specifically towards workflow automation. Mm -hmm. So what we have is the data that we do or we use on the flatbeds. So the, uh, not necessarily the data, but the, let's say, the mindset of how a workflow works on a, on a flatbed. We are going to translate this to the capabilities that we have in GoSign. GoSign can work very simple can also automate things, but you can also do more advanced uh, items here. So uh, you, can, you can use certain, certain things here. Um, recently, beginning of February, we had an, uh, an update towards uh, GoSign 2.0 with a couple of new features. Uh, more features are being launched later on in the, in the year. Uh, base, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, within a month, we will have another update to 2.1 with a couple of nice uh, functionalities there. So let's just quickly look at uh, Go Sign. So if we look at my screen here, I typically have my Go Sign, uh, my Go Sign uh, software, where I have my device here. Um, I can add my devices, I can uh, import devices, etc. So if I press New. It basically helps you to automatically select your device. So if you look here, just by pressing new, it checks the USB ports and it checks the uh, Ethernet um, network for devices that I have. I can easily name this. I can select my device. So I have here a S1D 140FX and S1D 60 and one which is in the network but offline. Important when you see question marks, this, this means that the cutter is offline. Um, so I already have my cutter installed. Now, what is interesting in GoSign? There are a couple of ways of working with GoSign. Well, first of all, you can import files. So if I press import file, you will notice that we have a range of file formats that we can support. So PDF are there, DXF for people using AutoCAD, and SGP and OXF support as well. So SGP is the Suma Go Produce um, file format that will allow you to select your material from within your cut job. So as, an, as a user of the software, you do not need to select a material because if you look closely to here. So if I go to material manager, there is actually a material manager here where you can select or add your own materials. Uh, so um, this is uh, useful for a standardized roll cutter, but if you go to Opal's CAM uh, devices, it has a lot more functionality because your camera profiles, certain uh, settings are also uh, linked in that software. On the, on the standardized roll cutter using an Opal sensor, you do not have any uh, camera profiles, but you have purely a sensor and this is purely done on the hardware. Now, um, what I wanted to show you, uh, well, first of all, I would like to uh, mention that uh, we are posting in the coming months uh, tutorials on GoSign. Simple tutorials, but uh, just watch our YouTube channel and they will be posted um, from time to time. Uh, what I wanted to show you is, uh, so we have our import, but what we also have is um, what the software will do when uh, working together with a Corel Draw or, a, or an Illustrator. Because uh, Winplot was very simple, you did an export, so let me just quickly use uh, Startup Corel Draw here, because this is the software that I have on my computer. Um, so what the, um, sorry, I just lost the th a train of thought here. Uh, so um, Winplot, when you open up uh, the device, it will, let's say open up in Winplot, and then you forward this to your cutter. Um, go sign, as a start, works in the same way, because just open up my, my coral draw here. Okay, just very simple. I do a square, and then I can select um, Publish to PDF, sorry, publish to PDF or send to go sign. If I press go sign, it will automatically import this square in go sign. And as you can see, I have my device that was active. If you have multiple devices, 
you will see here a list of devices and also one which is your default. Um, here is my uh, main folders in terms of material settings and uh, under each folder you have of course several settings. These, this is basically what you would have from the start but you can add more and more along the way. Um, by default this is done in a kiss cut and I can simply select output to roll and this will uh, start to cut on my device. Now if I want to not see cosine I can go to the general tab and here you can see plugin settings. Now the plugin settings is what will happen when you use a plugin from within your Illustrator or, or, or Corel Draw. In default it's going to do direct import but what I can also select is direct output. If I select this, let me just quickly close my um, my go sign here and when I click here it should connect with go sign and immediately output this to my roll cutter as you can see hmm? now my roll cutter is currently offline so it's not outputting so I need to press cancel um, so as you can see you can automate certain things uh, one thing is how it reacts so it this is like a uh, silent version so go sign will pop up in front but it will automatically send this to your roll cutter other things that you can do which are very interesting is uh, it's not going to be visible using a a uh, let's say a uh, square so let me just take a text abc oh sorry did, did i edit did i add this nope my computer is quite slow today. It is not Monday for him, but it uh, he acts like it's Monday. So ABC. Now, before I continue, I need to change this to back again import. Now, uh, why am I do uh, am I showing you this? Um, a lot of people using uh, Sumaka D60s will work in flex or flock material. Now we all know flex and flock, if it's printable flex um, you're going to print on top, if it's non-printable flex you will have glue on top. So what you need to do is mirror your cut uh, job. So in general what people used to do in Winplot is they export this to uh, our device. Oh. Uh, sorry direct import this is my my mistake because with import file it is opening up my import file dialog so go to directly and I have my job and then basically what I need to do is I need to select my job and then say mirror vertically now this is not a lot of work but if you're going to do this a lot then it might be interesting to add let's say an automation for this so how to do this is quite simple you select your uh, direct import job here so direct import I duplicate it because I do not want to lose my original settings and then I can press the edit button which is at the bottom here and then I can say direct import for flex so I have my import job, it rotates, it search regs uh, sorry, searches reg marks, it closes objects. What I can do is, if I find it immediately, is mirror vertically or horizontally. So if I did a mirror vertical, so I press OK. Now what I need to do is go to here and select for flex, of course. So if you, if you have somebody doing this a lot, you will notice that when I press this, it immediately imports and mirrors my job uh, very easily. Now, um, this is a quite an easy workflow, but for people using uh, a lot of flex material, this will improve their, what I, what I like to call ergonomics or quality of life. Uh, now, you can even go a step further and do a direct output, so they do not need to uh, press here uh, direct output or output to roll that it immediately starts to cut you can do more just more than this as well you can uh, basically um, let's say remove sorry uh, you can basically remove 
uh, layers. You can, um, let's say, assign certain things to layers. You can even um, um, sorry. Uh, so direct output. You can even do multiple copies. If you have somebody who wants to have uh, for every job that he sends 10 copies, then you can automatically add um, here in my output job. So let's go to just add output. As you can see, it's quite easy. You just simply select your action and drag it in your actions list. And here I can say, for instance, number of copies I have I need 20 copies. Now, every time I'm going to send this to my cutter, it will automatically cut 20 copies. So this is something the customer needs to realize if he wants to do a complete uh, silent workflow that he will always get 20 copies. Now, if, he, if this is a prerequisite for him, you can add this. If this is not, then I would suggest to delete. Simply select it and press delete. Uh, and then he just simply press presses output and and it's and and define what the amount of copies there are in there. Uh, so um, I don't want to go too far too far into Go Sign because we will be launching uh, tutorials um, in the coming weeks, and there is an, uh, a very short, uh, let's say, um, uh, tool tips that you can read. So. Hopefully, you learn something about the S1. You learn something about uh, an Onyx print and cut workflow, specifically with barcode. And we've learned something about GoSign. So we're bas I'm, I'm basically at the end of uh, my prepared webinar. Uh, let's now go over to the Q&A section.